Good afternoon and welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. I hope you're well, I hope your family's safe and uh, I hope you've got security in these very troubled times. Let me start and reiterate some of my macro thoughts. What's certain is that the whole global economy has been hit by an insidious, literally invisible circuit breaker. It reminded me of Milton, who I studied, whose poetry I studied, and the snake was insidious and invisible. Um, but definitely, there is no, as far as I can see, there is no uh, short-term uh, uh, palliative or fix for this problem. I also know that we're about to enter the Great Depression. That's entirely predicted and predictable. The virus is not correlated to endogenous market dynamics, but is an exogenous uncertainty that remains unresolved. We have seen um, uh, ahead of the curve attempts to solve this endogenous uncertainty, um, uh, in particular, um, uh, this exogenous uncertainty, particularly um, in places like Taiwan um, and Korea, which have not had to undergo a full shutdown. But that's because of the level of testing and the level of contact tracing, and then the isolation of all those people and hardly any other country is doing it to that extent. Merkel uh, uh, in Germany is as well. Home Thoughts first light at Aberdeer National Park photo by Daktari Marek. I haven't been there for an eternity. It's very pretty, I must say. Kenyans on Twitter, Nairobi Park, today, yesterday, by the clubhouse, an Earth Day reminder about why we must keep the park as free of developments as possible. Nature gives many times over. Happy Earth Day. That's from Paula Kuhumbu. And uh, that took me back to that quote Obvious Naipaul, you felt the land taking you back to what was there a hundred years ago, to what had been there always. This is a leopard that I saw, Panthera pardus, in the Masai Mara, is one of the five extant species in the genus Panthera, a member of the Felidae. That was from the Mara when we'd gone to Mahali, Missouri. Political reflections, let's start with something different today. Kim Jong-un's sister is tipped as his successor as North Korea's next leader. Few people had even heard her name two years ago. With North Korea's leader now rumored to be grappling with a serious heart condition, the world's eyes have focused on the 31-year-old Pyongyang-born Politburo member. Yet very little is known about the dear leader's kid sister apart from public observations that the siblings appear to be very close. And like her brother, she believes a carefully oiled propaganda machine is key to maintaining an iron grip on power in North Korea. It is Kim Yo Jong who is being widely tipped to seize power in the Hermit Kingdom that has been ruled by three successive generations of the Kim dynasty for the past seven decades. She is also vice director of the propaganda and agitation department, as was her father of the country's only political party, the Workers' Party of Korea. She studied computer science at the Kim Il-sung University, named after her grandfather, who founded North Korea with the assistance of the Soviet Union in 1948. It is also believed she underwent some form of military training. 
One of the world's first glimpses of Kim Yo Jong was her, at her father Kim Jong Il's funeral in 2011 when she was 22. She is now credited with molding Kim Jong Un's man of the people persona and responsible for the iconic images of her brother scaling the country's sacred Mount Pektu on a white horse. Yo Jong became the first member of the ruling Kim dynasty to visit South Korea since the 1950-1953 Korean War when she attended the 2018 Winter Olympics opening ceremony in Pyeongchang. After North Korea resumed missile testing and its neighbor issued public condemnations, she decried South Korea as a frightened dog barking. Western intelligence agencies also claim she's a senior member of a government department which oversees illicit activities to raise foreign reserves including counterfeiting, cyber theft, drugs and arms sales. However, if Kim Jong-un's health problems do turn out to be true, then it is Kim Yo Jong who emerges for the time being at least as the custodian of power in North Korea. I take you back to February 2018 when I was writing about the visit to Pyeongchang and I said what we saw unfold in Pyeongchang marks a significant and iconic moment for the Mount Pektu bloodline. Then I wrote, Kim Jong-un unleashed his secret weapon on the world, the secret weapon being his sister Kim Yo-jong, who evidently bamboozled South Korea's President Moon Jae-in. Just go and have a look at some of the close photography and footage. And she said then, I wish I can see you in Pyongyang at an early date, she told Mr. Moon. 30th of April 2018, <clears throat> uh, quoting what uh, uh, Kim wrote in the visitor's book, a new history starts now, an age of peace from the starting point of history. The events that took place on Friday <clears throat> at the truce village of Panmunjom and during the inter-Korean summit were breathtaking for the Hollywood optics, the opening shot of Kim Jong-un surrounded by a phalanx of North Korean officials, later replayed as Chairman Kim sat in his presidential vehicle, surrounded by his ninja bodyguards, was almost as good as the opening sequence in P.T. Anderson's Boogie Nights. This was cinema of the highest level, which is no surprise when you consider that Kim Jong-il, the father, was obsessed with cinema and amassed arguably the world's largest personal film collection, over 20,000 bootlegged 35 millimeter screening copies. Kim Jong-il also had a penchant for Hennessy parody Cognac and for two years in the mid-1990s. He was the world's largest buyer of Hennessy parody Cognac, importing up to $800,000 of the stuff a year. Kim Jong-il began his career as the head of the state's propaganda and agitation department and it's clear that Kim Jong-un's sister, Kim Yo-jong, who holds the same role and evidently handles all the optics, is a chip off the old block. Friday was tip-top geopolitical optics. And then this is a bit of footage of the 12 jogging bodyguards escorting Kim Jong-un's limo. And I wrote also about it in November 2010 when I was saying far away in distant lands lies the hermit kingdom. They all have had tiny little hands like the elves and the elves and the shoemaker. The notorious nine, these world leaders responded to the coronavirus with denial, duplicity and ineptitude, Globe and Mail. Everyone remembers the powerful world leaders who derided the coronavirus threat or even denied its existence in its early stages. President Trump said the virus would disappear like a miracle. 
British Prime Minister Boris Johnson boasted cheerfully about shaking hands with everybody at a hospital, including COVID-19 patients, Chinese officials arrested or muzzled doctors who tried to warn of the danger. Who were the deniers, the minimizers, the blithe mockers, the confident believers, the vodka promoters, the unconcerned and the uninterested? The Globe and Mail looks at some of the most dubious responses to the pandemic. Belarus, the strong man of Belarus, delivered some startling news to his country's citizens last week. No one will die of coronavirus in our country. I publicly declared this, President Alexander Lukashenko said. All of the dead had pre-existing health conditions, he claimed. Therefore, I say that not a single person died purely from the coronavirus. Vodka helps too, according to Mr. Lukashenko, as does playing hockey. Mexico, President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, um, if you're able to have the means to do so, continue taking your family out to eat. That strengthens the economy. At his daily news conferences, he brandished a series of good luck charms, prayer cards, a US $2 bill, and a drawing of a six-leaf clover. If the president was still tempted to follow his own advice on eating out, there would be nowhere to go in his capital. Tanzania, President John Magafuli, telling his people to keep going to their churches and mosques. Corona is the devil and it cannot survive in the body of Jesus, he told a church service in late March. It will burn. Less than three weeks later, his theological premise is in doubt. Today, there are 254 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Tanzania with 10 deaths and the number is increasingly dramatically. He's similar to those folks who says, Jesus is my vaccine in America. Tanzania today remains the only country where the government has recommended church attendance as a way of combating the virus. Turkmenistan, the official number of coronavirus cases in Turkmenistan is zero. Reporters Without Borders has accused Turkmenistan, which ranked dead last below even North Korea in last year's Press Freedom Index, of putting its 5.6 million citizens in danger by limiting all information about the coronavirus. Well, we can bet on what's going to happen there. Kim Jong-un, who has made truculence and duplicity an art form, has stayed true to form during the coronavirus outbreak. North Korea, officially speaking, is the sole Asian outlier, a virus-free haven. Um, but then there are strong rumors that he caught it himself. Cambodia, the prime minister doesn't wear a mask, so why do you, Hun Sen asked. Cambodia's health minister had already dismissed the risk. Infections are unlikely here because our country is just too hot. California, Devin Nunes, it's a great time to just go out to a local restaurant. Likely you can get in, get in easily. In another Fox appearance on April 1, he said it was way overkill to close schools and that people should stop looking at the death counters, marking the number of people killed by COVID-19. Zimbabwe, um, as of April 15, just 716 coronavirus tests had been conducted in Zimbabwe, a country of 15 million people. As I've said before, the COVID-19 is invisible. It has already defeated the most expensive aircraft carriers. It lurks everywhere and in silence. And there is something karmic in this COVID-19. When you seek to challenge its bona fides, it kind of targets you. Leaders are saying, don't panic. And I want to say, look, Chum, you're not Merkel. And just a few days ago, you were telling me it's all cool. It's just the flu. Others might take you seriously on what basis I know not, but I don't. 
The saliva of COVID-19 patients can harbor half a trillion virus particles per teaspoon and a cough aerosolizes it into a diffuse mist. Previously I'd said a non-linear and exponential virus represents the greatest risk to a control machine in point of fact. We are the hollow men, we are the stuffed men leaning together, headpiece filled with straw, alas. You will note all the naysayers are men. Real world exponential growth looks like nothing, nothing, nothing then cluster, 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 then boom. The greatest shortcoming of the human race is our inability to understand the exponential function, Professor Alan Bartlett. The moment of escape velocity has arrived, <clears throat> as Malcolm Gladwell described the tipping point as the name given to that moment in an epidemic when a virus reaches critical mass. A letter to the New York Times, President Trump's daily briefings aren't really news anyway. They're just third-rate reality TV, complete with tantrums, jealousy, infighting, and too much makeup and hairspray, all at our expense. Jenna Friedman, a reality TV star, botched the response to a global pandemic, and now we're all imprisoned in our homes and forced to watch him daily. To watch the daily briefing is to understand that the control machine has a novice, a hubristic narcissus in charge of the console. Coronavirus's ability to mutate has been vastly underestimated and mutations affect the deadliness of strains. This is a Chinese study via the SCMP News. The most aggressive strains of SARS-CoV-2 could generate 270 times as much viral load as the least potent type. These mutations included changes so rare that scientists had never considered they might occur. SARS-CoV-2 has acquired mutations capable of substantially changing its pathogenicity Lee and her collaborators wrote in a non-peer-reviewed paper released on preprint service Medar XIV Org on Sunday. Lee took an unusual approach to investigate the virus mutation. She analyzed the viral strains isolated from 11 randomly chosen COVID-19 patients from Hangzhou in the eastern province of Zhejiang, where the bats come from and then tested how efficiently they could infect and kill cells. Drug and vaccine development, while urgent, need to take the impact of these accumulating mutations into account to avoid potential pitfalls. Lee's team detected more than 30 mutations, among them 19 mutations, or about 60% were new. They found some of these mutations could lead to functional changes in the virus's spike protein, a unique structure over the viral envelope enabling the coronavirus to bind with human cells. Remember that. To verify the theory, Lee and colleagues infected cells with strains carrying different mutations. The most aggressive strains could generate 270 times as much viral load as the weakest type. These strains also kill the cells the fastest. The coronavirus changes at an average speed of about one mutation per month. By Monday, more than 10,000 strains had been sequenced by scientists around the globe, containing more than 4,300 mutations. They used a sophisticated method known as ultra-deep sequencing. And usually, usually the genes mutated at one site at a time, but one patient spent more than 50 days in hospital, much longer than other COVID-19 patients, and even his feces were infectious with living viral strains. The S protein about which they were speaking binds to the targeted cell through the ACE2 receptor, and boom, your cell is infected and becomes a viral replication, a virus replication factory, Scott Burke 777. The um, 
The S spike protein plays a key role in how the virus infects cells. Each of the little spikes that surround the coronavirus is a spike protein or S protein. Um, that's what gives the coronavirus its name, its crown of these spikes. The S protein binds to the targeted cell through the ACE2 receptor and boom, your cell is infected. After the first SARS outbreak, there was a land rush to find other coronaviruses. A collection of SARS-like coronaviruses was isolated in several horseshoe bat species over 10 years ago. Um, in 2007, a team of researchers based in Wuhan, in conjunction with an Australian laboratory, conducted a study with SARS, a SARS-like coronavirus, and HIV-1. The researchers noted that if small changes were made to the S protein, it broke how SARS-CoV worked. It could no longer go in via ACE2, so they inferred the S protein was critical to the SARS attack vector. They decided to create a pseudovirus where they essentially put a SARS-like COV in an HIV envelope. It worked. Twelve years goes by, a SARS-like COV begins sweeping the globe that is far more infectious than previous outbreaks. 24th of February, I said the viral moment has arrived. YouTube CEO Suzanne Wozicki says anything that goes against the WHO is a violation of YouTube policies. That took me back to Professor Zhu Zhangrun, who said they now turn to rule over the people by means of what could be dubbed big data totalitarianism and WeChat terror and YouTube has joined the party. You will all be no better than fields of garlic chives, giving yourselves up to being harvested by the blade of power time and time again. What is thriving, however, is all that ridiculous red culture and the nauseating adulation that the system heaps on itself via shameless pro-party hacks who cheer up hosannas at every turn. <clears throat> 1st of March, when I was looking into the origin of the COVID-19, I said this, I was quoting Don DeLillo, there's always more to it. This is what history consists of. It is the sum total of the things they aren't telling us. If they can get you asking the wrong questions, they don't have to worry about the answers. Wuhan Institute of Virology, Gates Foundation, World Health Organization, have all been hacked and thousands of emails, passwords and documents have been leaked online. As I said, viruses exhibit non-linear and exponential characteristics. Currency markets dollar index holding firm above 100 at 100.272. Euro dollar 108.26, a little bit softer. Gold, last time I checked, 17.15. As you know, I think the streets of Venezuela, which are covered in cash, are a harbinger and a positive catalyst for the price of gold. The print shop, Scott Burke 777 again. 24th of February, I said about gold, I would venture gold is correlated to the coronavirus, which is set to turn parabolic and is already non-linear and exponential. 22nd of March, I reiterated that by, I said gold will soon turn viral to the upside, that I'm looking for more than $2,000. Oil, on a serious note, there is a risk of sovereign defaults from nations that rely heavily on oil exports. Here's 2018 data for heavily exposed countries. As I said on a tweet, we're now entering the twilight zone for a lot of oil producers. What I do know is this regime implosion is coming to the oil producers. Trump can game the price. I was writing that when he gamed the price, a little more sure, but it's a pointless exercise. Demand has created and a return to a hyper-connected 100 million barrels per day world is not going to happen for the foreseeable future. I said Putin will survive because he prepared for this moment. Others are as good as terminated. Saudi Arabia, three shocks have come at once. Pandemic lockdowns, no Hajj revenue, 
plummeting oil demand. Cash reserves may buy time, but sooner or later subsidies will have to be cut, spelling trouble. Um, oil in storage rises to a record 3.2 billion barrels. That's from Chi Girl. And as I said, we're moving from a world of hyper-connectedness to a world of quarantine. And the price of crude oil is perfectly correlated to that sudden stop and quarantine. Oil producers are at the Hunter S. Thompson edge. There is no honest way to explain it because the only people who really know where it is are the ones who have gone over. Sub-Saharan Africa, COVID cases 25,937, deaths 1,242, Africa CDC. But as I've said, we're looking in the rearview mirror when we see those numbers. Interesting uh, article, Mathematical Modeling, Center for Mathematical Modeling for, of Infectious Diseases, talking about Africa, saying the health impact of COVID-19 may differ in African settings as compared to countries in Europe or China due to demographic, epidemiological, environmental and socioeconomic factors. At the time of writing, only two African countries, Lesotho and Comoros, had not reported any confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infections. Simulations of an unmitigated epidemic in Niger resulted in a median of 4.1 million clinical cases during the first 12 months following introduction of the first case, 48.7 million in Nigeria and 490,000 in Mauritius. We estimate 39,000 deaths due to COVID-19 in Niger, 605,000 in Nigeria and 17,000 in Mauritius would occur over the same period, not accounting for indirect excess mortality due to health service or socio-economic disruptions. They've got some interesting mitigating measures. Shielding seems to be the big one. Coronavirus cases in Africa could shoot up from thousands now to 10 million within three to six months. That was some provisional modeling from WHO. As I've told you before, coronavirus is exponential, non-linear and multiplicative. Trade volumes in the EAC are down by up to 25% since the beginning of 2020, with even worse damage in the informal sector. That's the Africa report. There are warnings of a food security disaster on the continent. As I said, it would not be an exaggeration to say we're staring into the abyss of a zombie apocalypse. Growth in sub-Saharan Africa is projected at minus 1.6% lowest level on record, it's going to be considerably worse. Um, COVID-19 in the WHO Africa region, click on that on rich wrap-ups if you want to see the latest up-to-date data, but we are looking in the rearview mirror as I've said before, and debt, virus and locusts are creating a perfect storm for Africa. 14th of October I was looking at Africa and I called it Ozymandias. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, you mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains round the decay of that colossal wreck. Boundless and bare, the lone and level sand stretch far away. In my most recent article, I said China has an option to buy in sub-Saharan African assets at fire sale prices. Um, uh, this is because so many loans were collateralized by commodities which have collapsed. This was China's plan all along to run up the debt of these developing countries and when they couldn't pay them back, China would take their assets. We warned them this would happen, Nikki Haley. Ethiopia, 88% of hotels in Addis Ababa have decided to partially or fully close their hotels due to low occupancy rates according to a survey done by Addis Ababa Hotel Owners Association. 22nd of March, I said tourism is stopped out in 2020. Global remittances are projected to decline sharply by about 20% in 2020 due to the economic crisis 
induced by the COVID-19 pandemic, says the latest global K-Nomad World Bank report. In 2020, remittance flows to low- and middle-income countries are expected to drop by around 20% to $445 billion from $554 billion in 2019. I think it'll be lower than that. 22nd of March, I said, how much do we need to haircut full-year sub-Saharan African 2020 remittances? 10%, 20%, more than 25% is what I think. These are the countries most vulnerable to a sharp decline in remittances as the level of economic activity in the source country contracts and migrant workers are furloughed or laid off. That's from Africa's Pulse. Air Mauritius has entered voluntary administration after coronavirus-related disruptions made it impossible for the airline to meet its financial obligations for the foreseeable future. 22nd of March, I said our airlines are no longer going concern. South African all share down 15.72% year-to-date. Dollar rand 18.9255, headed to 20. Egyptian pound 15.75, EGX 30, down 29.8% year-to-date. March 5, I said Nigeria's oil revenue is cratering and a currency devaluation is now predicted and predictable. And Nigeria will now cut production with or without an OPEC agreement because it has no place to store its crude. Nigerian all shares down 15.13%. Ghana Stock Exchange is down 7.09%. Kenya shilling at 107.25. Nairobi all share down 17.63%. NSE 20 down 25.19%. Thank you for listening.